as people with disabilities, their gender, the sexual orientation, and all of the other identity factors we find <clears throat> in all age groups. The best way to find out <clears throat> what their priorities are is to listen to them and address their concerns. Any political participation project that doesn't make room for serious listening cannot succeed. I like the emphasis of Generation Engage on sustained political engagement. Clearly, it is not enough to mobilize voter registration, education, and turnout activity around election time and leave it at that. We must try to make political participation a more permanent activity and really a way of life for young people. We have to create a consciousness among American youth that political is an ongoing citizenship responsibility and a lifelong moral obligation. I also like Generation Engage's emphasis on reaching out to involve young workers, not just college students. So many get out, of the vote, get out the vote initiatives I hear about seem to focus on college students, but half of America's youth in the 18 to 24 age group are not college students. Political scientists call them the forgotten half. These young people very often have an even larger stake in politics than students. And opinion polls indicate that many of them feel that they are being shortchanged by the political system. Increasing the involvement of, Amer of America's young workers is the, in the political process could produce a dramatic transformation of the political landscape in America and very much for the better. Election-related activity is just one facet of political participation. There's also a great need to educate young people about the political issues of year round, year in, and year out. And there is an equally compelling need to encourage young people to become citizen lobbyists for needed legislation at the local, state, and federal levels, no matter who wins elections or holds office. Young people must be more involved in monitoring the progress of legislation and keeping our elected officials honest and informed about the priorities of the people and of young people in particular. I applaud the increased participation of celebrities who have a special appeal to youngsters in mobilizing young voters. True, they did not have a very significant effect in increasing the numerical turnout, but I hope their leadership will encourage other public figures to get involved on a more permanent basis. Certainly having more public figures with youth appeal promoting political participation, not just every election cycle, but all of the time can't hurt. I think significant numbers of young people may be tuning out from the political process because too much bitterness, anger, and animosity has crept into our political dialogue. I believe, I believe that it is possible. Indeed, it is imperative that we can strongly disagree on matters of policy, yet maintain a higher level of civility towards one another. <clears throat> what we must understand is that bringing a violent spirit into our political di discourse undermines democracy. 
There is a very thin line between threats and intimidation and words that express contempt toward other human beings and personalized attacks. When we allow our political dialogue to degenerate in this way, our democracy is not well served, and we can't blame people for tuning us out. We can have strong disagreements about policy, but we have to live together nonetheless. Somehow we have to get the insults, accusations, and personal attacks out of the political dialogue. We can and should energetically debate our differences on matters of policy, but let us strive more diligently in the future to keep our political dialogue on the high plane of dignity and mutual respect. In this way, we not only strengthen democracy, we also help to build the beloved community of Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream. It is critically important as well that we help young people understand that there is a vital connection between political policy and legislation on the one hand and the quality of their lives on the other. I think that there is a feeling of powerlessness among American youth, almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. They don't feel empowered because they don't participate, and they don't participate because they don't feel empowered. Our challenge is to intervene using all the creative methods at our disposal to break this cycle of powerlessness. <laughs> Get young people involved and empowered to become agents of social change through the vigorous exercise of their citizenship obligations. I think Generation Engage is quite right that the best way to do this is at the grassroots level. Reaching young people through their community-based organizations and institutions. I understand that Generation Engage will soon be launching pilot programs in Virginia, North Carolina, employing young leaders in their hometown communities to connect young people with the political process. This is an exciting challenge. And I wish you the greatest success in this promising project. As we celebrate the launching of this exciting program, let us rededicate ourselves to a new era of energized political activism. With the commitment and with God's blessings, we look toward the rebirth of a more vigorous, responsive democracy which can transform the jangling discords of our nation and to a beloved community of caring. And when this great goal is achieved, we will not only have to try and, we will not have to try and force democracy on anyone because our vibrant and irresistible example will be emulated by freedom-loving people in all nations and peace, and, and peace with justice and harmony will reign supreme. Thank you and God bless you all.